under the topic of keeping your system tidy. And by this, I mean making sure that you've not got uh, old sales orders and works orders lurking around and purchase orders, because all of these will uh, cloud the issue as far as MRP is concerned when you're running uh, an MRP calculation. So first of all, looking from a sales point of view, and this is quite often what I do when I go into customers, I'll have a look at the delivery menu and allocate stock and just hit enter to see everything. And then just by looking down, I can ask questions. And with this view that I've got on my test data, my question on this second line would be, we've got 100 ordered of this A001 uh, for customer A001, and it was due the 1st of March. I've got none available, I've got none allocated, and I've not got any works orders to make them. So why? Is it uh, a valid order? And may well not be, in which case go and get it deleted off the system. If it's highlighting the fact that a works order has not been raised for it, then get the works orders raised. So it's just an overview that people can carry out. And this, this view also shows everything in due date order. And the ones in red are overdue. And then as we get further down, we'll see um, for the future dates. So that was the first bit as far as keeping your system tidy is concerned. The second bit on purchase, if we have a look at purchase and um, purchase order maintenance, and in the gold bar, we can tick the detail view and hit enter. And we can look down here and see all our outstanding sales orders. And if I scroll down, I can see at the bottom here, I've got, um, one that, uh, that's not responding quite as quickly. Yeah, this one's 795, for example. Um, we can see that it uh, should have been supplied way back in 2015. So is that really outstanding? And from this view, I can zoom in on the, on the uh, purchase order line item. And I can see that we actually delivered the 420 but then 10 were returned by the client, this bracketed 20. So I can actually tick that as complete if, if it genuinely is and we, we don't still need to supply the customer and I can clear that one off the system. So that's uh, a way of uh, bringing up those purchase order items. There's also within reports on purchasing, you can see the view outstanding and this will come up in uh, an outstanding due date sequence, all of the items. Um, and you can actually zoom in from here and do a similar process of deleting off ones that are no longer relevant. Quite often companies, and this happens on both sales and purchase, you, you might have ordered 100, you get 99, but the ones left lurking on the system there, same with your supply to a customer. So they need to be kept tidy. The next one, not many people use, but I think it's quite a useful uh, facility and it's resource bottlenecks. Now it's not a particularly pretty view, so I apologize for that. But if you choose resource bottlenecks and just hit enter, and this will list all of your resources down the page. I've got a horrendous number because of all the demonstrations I do. But if I look at assembly, for example, and click on previous op complete. I've got one job that where the previous op complete and it's been outstanding at that state for 590 days. Now that's highly unlikely that that is still a valid works order. So that's another one to investigate and tidy up and get rid of. Out of interest, when I go into customers, I'll have a look at this and I quite often find that one of the highest uh, previous ops complete is for inspection and you might have 20, 30, 50 jobs there, you know, and it just highlights these areas where you've got bottlenecks, but also items that might need tidying up. Um, you can also click on the first stop uh, on the works order and other operations, etc. but it's this previous op complete that I tend to home in on. So that's a little bit about keeping the system tidy and identifying things that can perhaps be uh, removed. 
Now, the next item I have is cloning of parts and their associated bills of material and manufacturing routes. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this, but if I come into my stock system and I look at a part OM-219 something or the other, uh, so if I do that, there's the item. And if I look at uh, the um, manufacturing routes, so if I come in here, I've got an assembly for the item and I can drill in and have a look at the assembly and all of the components that are in those sub-assemblies. And they're both manufactured sub-assemblies there. Um, but if I wanted to create a copy of that uh, item and perhaps make some slight alterations to it, if I put this screen into modify mode, control M, and click this copy replace, I can copy that part number, and I'm doing that with control C, and then pasting it and just sticking a GRS on the end of it for this demonstration, and hit enter, and that is going to copy that part, create a clone of it, and copy all the manufacturing routes and processes as well. So now I'm in the one I've just created, is put a note in there that it's been created from the original part number and who did it, when, what time. And in the assembly and manufacturing routes, I've got exactly the same structures as I had previously. And you could then go about manipulating those.